Well, I was in the SED, the Special Engineer Detachment, and uh, <clears throat> I worked in what was then called D building, and with a colleague, James Gergen, I purified all the plutonium that went into the Nagasaki bomb. That's what I did. <laughs> the purification process that we used was uh, purely in, in the liquid uh, phase. We worked with solutions of uh, plutonium nitrate and put it through a variety of chemical processes to get out all the impurities. Uh, but <clears throat> I want to I want to go back because I think perhaps more interesting than the chemistry of uh, plutonium is the whole process, uh, the procedures that we went through. We received the shipments of plutonium from Hanford, and usually they came in one liter uh, flasks. It was a dark brown liquid. And of the two of us, Jim Gergen and I, I was uh, the one who took what's called an aliquot, a tiny, tiny little sample, a microliter of this solution in order to have it analyzed so that we would know how much we were signing the receipt for, because we had to sign a receipt <laughs> when we received this. Uh, Hanford Lab would specify how much they thought they were sending us, and then we would have it analyzed. And the analysis, however, was not a chemical analysis. It was a radio assay. And there was a laboratory that did these radio assays. So I would take a tiny microliter sample of this liter and send it to the radio assay people. They would send back uh, their analysis of how much plutonium was in that microliter. I would multiply it by the appropriate factor to determine how much plutonium was in the flask. And uh, then I'd sign a document to that effect. And of course, there was always a discrepancy between what Hanford thought they sent and what we analyzed. And for as far as I can remember, the discrepancy always went in one direction. We always decided that they had sent us less than they sent, said they sent. In the process of doing all of this, I kept the record of what came in, the date it came in, uh, the sample I took, the analysis that we were given, and um, I made a chart, a matrix. And after the sheet was all filled, I mean, after all, it was, a, it was a record of shipments of plutonium, which was the whole project was secret, as you know. So I stamped it secret. But I didn't have clearance to look at secret documents. So then I couldn't look at it anymore. <laughs> the clearances were determined on the basis of whether or not, that is for those of us in the SED anyway, on the basis of whether or not you had a bachelor's degree. And at the time I went into the Army in 1943, I was a sophomore at MIT. So I had no bachelor's degree. So I did not have a secret clearance. So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't look at this sheet that I had filled out. But uh, there was a, an office at Los Alamos called the Quantity Control Office. It consisted of two people, one civilian and one GI in the Special Engineer Detachment. And their, their duty was to keep track of all the plutonium uh, on the site at Los Alamos to make sure that no critical mass ever accumulated in any one place. Uh, and so they were the people who actually delivered the flasks of plutonium nitrate to what was known as the wet chemistry, which is what we, we did. The, what's important, I suppose, is that weapons of mass destruction should never, ever be used. As a matter of fact, my feeling is they should all be destroyed because they can accomplish nothing except destruction. And uh, if one country uses a weapon of mass destruction against another, that second country is going to retaliate. And it's mutual destruction, and there's nothing to be gained. It's, the whole thing is pointless. Uh, when, 
when the project graduated from nuclear bombs to thermonuclear bombs, it was a kind of graduation that sh never should have taken place. Uh, just, it's pointless. And the, all I can think of is that we have a group of boys with their toys. We have a very good friend from, from Japan uh, who comes to visit us from Tokyo uh, frequently. She was a colleague of my wife's, and for years I never had the courage to tell her. And then once when Janet and I went to Japan, <coughs> Japan and visited Hiroshima and Nagasaki and saw the memorials, uh, after that we uh, met with, uh, with our friend and some of her friends. And I finally screwed up my courage to tell her. And I must say I was uh, pleased with the reaction. I found no resentment whatsoever in Japan over the use of the, the bomb by the United States, no reason, none at all. And I'm not sure I could have, I could have reacted that way. In the first place, obviously, if, if the weapons are going to exist, they should be in the hands of, the, of civilians, not, not the military. Because as I started to say before, I don't think at any time in the history of humankind has a weapon that's available to humans not been used. And that's what really makes me, uh, that's what really makes me uh, afraid about the nuclear weapons that are currently, that currently exist. You know, when we were at Los Alamos, I mean, this, this whole concept of the strict secrecy really is, uh, is, is just false because there wasn't strict secrecy. Here I was, you know, a sophomore. I had been in the Army. I had gone through the Army Specialized Training Program. The first day I arrived at Los Alamos, my boss, who was a civilian, yes. Arthur C. Wall, sat me down and explained the entire project to me, all about transuranic elements and exactly what uh, what was intended, what the purpose of the Manhattan Project was. This is at Los Alamos. Uh, I, what I neglected to say was that I s spent one month at Oak Ridge uh, when I was sent there originally, when the, <clears throat> uh, the Army Specialized Training Program ended, or at least my, my stint in it ended. Spent a month at Oak Ridge and uh, uh, this, I got a temporary job in there in not the personnel office, but I guess it was a personnel office, come to think of it. And, you know, just a temporary secretarial job because I was, I, I typed, I could type very well. And I learned where all of the, the sites of the project were located all around the country, and I learned there was one at MIT. Oh, I wanted to go back to MIT. And one day, one of the officers came in, and I sat with him uh, going over the what, what's known as the military occupational specialties of all of the GIs at Oak Ridge, because they were going to form a combat unit to fight the Japanese when the Japanese invaded Oak Ridge. Uh, yes. And so they were looking for people who had some kind of experience with weapons. So I screwed up my courage and asked him uh, if it were possible to send me to MIT. And he said, what's your name, soldier? And I thought, oh, what have I done now? And I told him, and he thought for a minute, and he said, I'm sorry, he said, I just signed the orders for you to go to, to site, what is it, why, I guess, uh, New Mexico was. And so I, that's why I ended up there. But um, <clears throat> it was a fascinating experience, I will say that. Uh, we all thought that if this succeeded at, at Trinity, at Alamogordo, uh, that a demonstration would be made for the Japanese that would not be used as a weapon. We would demonstrate to them uh, the power of this thing, and they would surrender. Well, needless to say, policy wasn't to demonstrate. And I can understand that because there was no guarantee that it would actually work even though the test had worked at, at Alamogordo. You know, they were really, you know, un, to a great extent, untested weapons. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, a demonstration was not held. The thing was used. The destruction was horrible. 
but it did end the war. And I can remember after the war, uh, when I would walk down the streets of Albuquerque, uh, where there was a military hospital of some kind, so there were, uh, there were lots of sailors and soldiers uh, in the city. And uh, soldiers would come up to me, because by that time we had this shoulder patch that indicated that, that we had worked on this project, come up to me and shake my hand and thank me for having saved them from the Pacific War. So, you know, there was some, some feeling of satisfaction out of it all. But I wish that the major lesson that had been learned was that we should destroy them all and not use them anymore. <laughs>